Hi everybody, Phil here, um, doing what I really hope is the last video in the series of rebuilding my golf sim videos. Now, um, I will show you what I've got. The turf arrived this morning. I've just lobbed it down. I haven't sunk my hitting strip in or anything like that, which may be consideration, but again, I'll talk about that shortly. But um, this is how things look. I'm absolutely delighted with the setup. As I've said before, um, when I set about this project, um, I'd not really enjoyed the sim as much as I used to last year. And I'd felt it wasn't really, it was a, it was a really messy area. Things were a bit untidy. Um, there was just stuff everywhere and it was just getting on my nerves. And I don't know if that affected my golf game, but I also just started losing my temper more and more. And I wanted to create a kind of new environment that was... Uh, just just neat around the edges you know my sim build i've got over 100 videos on my channel of me playing golf and it was functional but things didn't look great lots of material just clipped together and my design for protecting the steel frame worked well but i hadn't sewn in the velcro so therefore i was using clips everywhere and what i wanted to do was to create just a neater nicer um nicer space uh, somewhere that's going to hopefully be a more calm environment for me to play. Um, I'm going to really, really try and not lose my rag like I have um, previously. I did play uh, yesterday for an hour. Um, didn't play brilliantly, but didn't do too badly. Just to test everything out and everything was working great. Now the turf's down, it just neatens everything up and looks great. Um, I've got to get rid of a few creases, but we can work on that. Um, I did think about doing a subfloor and sinking in the hitting platform, but then I just thought that's, that's just a hassle I can't be bothered with. And everything I've done with this project is about trying to do things on a budget so that people can try and replicate it if they want to go down their own design. Now, this isn't a commercial kit. Um, maybe that's an idea, actually, that I should uh, provide this as a kit, and it might be something I, I do if people are interested. Um, but essentially... Um, it's just an idea of a design that you can follow. Um, uh, lessons learned, I would have tweaked it a little bit. On previous videos, um, you'll have seen that I have an archery screen behind here going up and then folding over to a wire. I've actually used four wires in my design. I would have had the wire, which is the second. So there's one that the screen folds over, or the, uh, the, but all, both screens fold over. There's the one that then the archery attaches to. And then there's one in front of that, which this primary screen attaches to. And then there's this one at the top, which this ceiling protection attaches to. And it folds over that furthest wire and comes back. So it's nice and neat. There's no like tarp clips that can be hit or anything like that. Now, I would have got um, bespoke archery netting a little bit higher than it is. My, uh, this design is about 2.8 meters high. Um, and I was reusing my previous um, archery screen from a build four years ago. Um, it meant that it just has enough cover to kind of go up behind this screen and barely folds over. I would have liked it to fold over a little bit more just to give extra support, that kind of join. But as it is, um, it's not big enough. But um, archery uh, netting is available in bespoke sizes, so just factor that in, and I would have moved that wire a little bit nearer this way, or possibly ended up attaching the archery netting and the main screen to a single wire going across. However, that might have put a bit more tension on it and ended up kind of pulling the wire even more than it already does, so perhaps this is the best design. I don't know. I've this is what I've used and I'm happy. Um, I'm going to be breaking down all the individual costs of the um, design. What I'll do firstly is what I've done on a previous video is just show you what things look like. So if I, I've got a light up there. That's, uh, this is just, um, just showing one of the kind of nice courses. Um, I'm running a 4K projector. I'm not running the software in 4K because it sharpens it up to the point where it almost looks too artificial because it's too sharp. Um, I didn't like it. I actually like this, which is using the full HD resolution and then I believe being upscaled through the um, through either the, the uh, projector or through the amp. I can't remember which. Um, <laughs> I can't remember which, but I'm happy with whatever it's showing. <laughs> Um, in any case, I will do the 4K demo again. People ask and say, oh, it's probably not worth doing 4K, um, is it, when you've got an um, impact screen and not a kind of dedicated cinema screen. And I wasn't sure. I kind of went to 4K just because I was keen to see what it looked like in the summer. And certainly if you're watching movies such as demo footage like this, again, I'm using Optoma because I've got an Optoma projector. Don't want to get in any copyright issues. Um, I'm now standing at my hitting position. And things are just so incredibly sharp that, um, you know, it really is fantastic. Now, I'm obviously showing this. I'm recording this, even though I'm recording it in 4K. I'm only uploading it in 
uh, full HD because I have to use, uh, you can't do it in YouTube uh, direct, uh, uploading 4K videos. You've got to do it by iMovie, I think. So, uh, but anyhow, things look incredibly sharp. And this is using the Hybrid Me Type 3 screen, um, which I have available if people are interested in purchasing and copying this design. And I will give you costs on that um, shortly. But uh, yeah, really does look good. I won't waste too much time going through that anymore. Get the golf back on the screen. So, uh, do -do, what have I got to break down then? Cost. People want to know costs and what have I actually bought. So, here's all my research. What we have is, it's very untidy, which is why I'm not going to actually like show it all. So, um, this total build for all the bits and pieces and parts that I've used, um, except for the screen or the two screens, the archery screen, the premium screen, and the flooring, has cost me £294. So I think that's pretty cheap. And I'll explain what I've used. Um, and then I'll go through this screen and the uh, grass cost as well, if, you, if people are interested. So what I've got here on the right side is effectively a backdrop ordered off Amazon for photography. It's, um, the branding is Niwa, N-E-W-E-R. And it comes in a six meter by three meter, which is what I've used for the top, folding it over. So effectively one and a half meters to the screen and then back and then clipping it on with these hooks, which I'll go through in detail. That costs 30 pounds and the 1.8 meter by 2.8 meter for the sides costs, um, cost, 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 10 pounds each. Um, <laughs> ideally, it would just be an inch or two further longer um, or I'd have, where I've got this bungee cord going across, I'll just sink it down and loosen it off a bit because it doesn't quite touch the floor. But um, anyhow, these are little minor tweaks that we can sort out. Uh, the next item that was used are carbine hooks. What are carbine hooks? There are these things that you push in and you can clip, clip things on. Now I use those along the top for the ceiling protection where I've got um, tarp clips gripping the ceiling material and then a carbine hook hooking onto the steel cable. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six along the top. I mean, I could have more to get it more even tensioned, but six has worked perfectly for me. I also use it along the back for attaching the um, archery screen, which does have eyelets, to the wire that's supporting the archery screen. So again, I've probably got about 10 over the back. So what I've done is put down that I've got 18 carbine hooks. My ones are seven centimetres long and are effectively eight millimetre thick. You can get them in any kind of size. You can either get stainless steel or zinc plated. For indoor build, it doesn't make any difference which you go with. So they were £10, effectively, for about 18. Then I've got quick locks. What are quick locks? Quick locks are the little grey box you can just see there with a the wire sticking out of it. Um, they're what I use for tensioning the cable um, because you can use pliers to kind of remove the cable, take them on, take them off. Um, they're very handy. Now, eight of those, because I've got four wires, I've got one at each end. Um, eight of those cost £75. Now, the ones I've gone are designed for three to four millimetre wire because I use four millimetre wire. Um, and effectively, um, I ordered that from a company called Techni. Um, and Techni uh, do a four millimetre, seven by 19, 316 stainless steel cable. Um, there are different types of cable. Some are rigid, some are flexible, um, and they've got different tensioning, but the one I'm using is seven by 19, or seven cross 19, as it appears. Um, and effectively, I've used about just over 20 meters, because it's like a five meter run, and a bit of, you need a bit extra to kind of fold around for being able to tension, and then I've just cut it with the uh, wire cutter. And effectively, um, I would therefore make sure you add a bit of excess. If you were to buy 30 meters, um, then that would cost £70. Then I've got uh, rough top tarp clips. Now I've shown these before. I think these are great. I've used lots of different tarp clips in the past. Um, some that don't have this little round thing that you twist, a little twist for tension. When you twist that, it grips it and you loosen them off. These are ideal for making adjustments, tweaking things. Uh, they're very strong and uh, six of those, uh, actually they're basically about a pound each. So on Amazon, you can get them. Um, and I've used 20 of them in this design. I use them at the sides for gripping the material and attaching to the angle iron. Um, in a previous video, so I should have said this right at the start, um, I showed off little stainless steel, uh, no, stainless steel, um, transparent uh, tarp clips, tiny little ones, thinking, oh, how fantastic. As soon as I hit three wood, they popped off the side. Now, maybe if I had more, they would work. I've ended up reverting to a design that is using the really thick um, rough top.
tarp clips really strong and they hold it beautifully and then i use bungee cords to attach through the slotted iron again i'll talk about the bungee cord shortly um so i you have to do something like that that does mean there's a bigger gap between the material and the angle iron um which if i had padding on the wall i'd have to bring that further in to kind of hide these clips um, or just have some material that's um, protecting it, like carpet running down, protecting it. Or you can actually have the archery screen behind and use those eyelets to fix to the angle line. And that means, obviously, no golf ball can escape down the edges. Um, as it is, I've just gone for cheap curtain that's going to hang inside. And even if a ball hit that, it's not going to escape. So, um, anyhow, that uh, rough top uh, yeah, angle line itself, three metres worth of stainless steel angle line. Uh, that was £20 for the pair. Um, this was the, bit, the hardest thing to do in the whole project was the angle line, a uh, slotted angle line, I, I say, to get the holes in it. And it's because some fool, you can kind of see here, decided to package it up. You can't quite see, but it's got basically um, gaffer tape stuck over the whole length of both sides of the three metre worth of cable. And it's the strongest gaffer tape known to man. Um, and it must have been about 10 years old because when you peel it off, like those stickers that are really annoying, the ones that leave residue, as you peel it off, it comes off in like millimetre little bits and then tears. And oh, it took me over an hour to get three metres worth of stainless steel slotted angle iron um, uh, free from this awful gaffer tape. So that's the only negative review I think I've ever done on Amazon. Um, uh, that really pissed me off and I've got really sore fingers. Poor me, poor me. Anyhow, uh, ball bungees. What are ball bungees? Again, I've done videos on this in the past. Ball bungees are these things. Effectively, you push the bungee cord through in the angle iron, bring it back through another hole, hook it through your... Or oh, actually, you've already hooked it through your... I hook on the tarp clip and effectively it allows you to grip things nicely. Now I've got loads of these. I've got about 150 in this bag, um, but generally the smaller ones are most useful because you're not really, often you're not need, you want it to kind of tighten it, but you're not wanting to stretch it over a long distance. The good thing with the ball bungees is when the screen's absorbing the impact, it means the ball bungees can also absorb a bit of that impact as opposed to using cable ties, which I showed in the previous um, video. So again, that's just something I, I would have changed um, and I have changed in my design. So 20 ball bungees are about 10 pounds. Uh, maybe get yourself 30, 40 different sizes. Um, ball bungees are your friends along with tarp clips. Easy to do, easy to work with, even if you're not very good at DIY like me. Uh, bungee cord. So I've just used, I haven't even tidied this up. I meant to cut that. Um, when I thought about this side protection, I thought, oh, I haven't got any, I haven't got any more of those quick locks. So I can't use tensioned wire, which I was going to do, just putting it up the side. So I ended up just getting some bungee cord, hooking it through the eye plate there and the eye plate up there and just hanging the screen material on that. And then I've just put an extra bit up today just to um, cover this up so it looks a bit neater where the clubs are. Um, but bungee cord, you know, I've put £10. It's, it's cheap. You can get it in whatever size you want, whatever length you want, whatever colour you want. Um, but you may not need bungee cord if you end up um, putting a curtain rail up the side or um, if you go with padded walls or if you decide, uh, you know, there's many different ways of doing it, but I've done £10 worth of bungee cord. Uh, next item is uh, eye plates. The eye plates are these fixings on the wall that have the um, eye hook and it's where effectively I'm then putting the tensioned wire through. As I said before, you, if you're going with this design, you need to make sure that your walls are going to be sufficiently strong. Um, to hold those fixings, you know, they need to be very strong because when you tension that wire, it's putting a lot of force um, onto those eye plates and you could easily pull either the eye plates out the wall um, or whatever it's going to be, um, or you could end up even doing worse, which is if the eye plates are in like a brick and it's a brick that doesn't have much weight on it, you might end up pulling a brick out the wall and the eye plate will still be attached. So just do bear that in mind, come up with a design to make sure it's going to be safe and get some um, advice if, uh, if necessary from builders or structural engineers or just someone who's a who's a, a clever sod that knows if it's going to be safe and um, more tension it carefully now i haven't put the costs in for wire cutters i should have um, you just need a wire cutter capable of cutting a three or four millimeter um, cable you could borrow one and then return it probably that's why i haven't factored in as cost same thing with the tensioning tool um, on a previous video i showed this big yellow thing that kind of grips the cable you push it up to the quick lock and as you as you push the thing together, it stretches the cable. Now, one of those, I think, is about 100, between 100 and 150 pounds to buy. Um, you may be able to just hire one or borrow one from a uh, builder's merchant or something um, rather than buying one. Um, or maybe I should rent mine out. Maybe, maybe people will build, build um, sims on the back of this and want to uh, rent it out. <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to charge some extortionate fee. Um, 
Maybe not. Um, so that all adds up to £294, if I've not messed that up. Um, someone, will, someone will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and then onto the screen. So the artificial glass first. So this is a four or five metres by four metres worth of just a short pile. I think it's about 12 millimetre pile. Um, golf turf or kind of putting turf. Now this cost me £170 um, for the five by four metres. It would have been double that price, except a lot of the artificial glass companies have remnants or offcuts that are kind of spare from when they're doing their big projects. And if you look and you find the right one, um, then obviously you can save a lot of money. And there was a 50% sale on uh, when I happened to buy this a couple of days ago. So perfect. And I say it's just short, but I don't intend on using it for putting green. Um, I did think about raising the floor with like a subfloor and then sinking my hitting strip in. That's kind of like what a lot of the big commercial builds do. Um, that's just way more hassle than I could be bothered with. I'm just going to end up possibly sticking with the rubber mat um, and the hitting stance surface. Or more likely, I will cut a little section out of this and just secure a stance mat, a fresh stance mat and a fresh hitting section um, within, uh, secure it to the floor beneath. So it just kind of sits slightly raised, but inside of the... Um, artificial glass. That can be worked out over time. Um, I'm also going to be testing out a new um, hitting surface um, in the weeks ahead. And again, I'll be doing videos on that. Um, so the cost, onto the other costs, the screens effectively. Now I've got an archery screen behind this. It doesn't need it. This is the Hybrid Me Type 3 screen material. Um, the archery screen um, could give it extra support because when a shot's hit, it can give it a little bit of extra protection at the back, kind of just reinforce it. Um, whether that will add to the longevity, I don't know. Um, but because I've got glass behind here, I just thought I, I, I always want to have at least um, one additional uh, material. So if and when I punch a hole through, I tend to mark the screen up with um, grip marks before I punch holes through them. But if I punch a hole through one, um, that the ball isn't gonna cause any damage. So I've gone with the archery screen behind and that cost, um, well, my archery screen, the Hybrid Me one, is £270 for a five metre by about three metre. Um, so that's a rough idea of the cost um, for a big archery screen, which for many people on a budget may be all they want. Uh, they may be happy, happy um, hitting into that. For golf, it's great. Um, it certainly doesn't give the image quality that you get with a premium screen like the uh, Type 3. Um, and you do suffer light bleed going through and back. So as I say, for golf, it's great. For watching sport, watching movies, um, you know, going with a premium screen like this is, is much better. Now the premium screen, so I've gone with the Hybrid Me Type 3 screen. Again, it's just over five meters wide, three meters high. So the cost is about um, 600, 625 pounds um, for the raw material. So that is, as I say, the raw material, 3.1 meters um, wide and it's five meters um, in length. So the material comes in a 3.1 meter width and it's just priced up per linear meter. So that effectively um, all adds up to 294 and then 895 for the two screens I've gone with and 170 for the grass. I didn't actually add that up, so what's that? That's 1,060, about 1,360 odd pounds um, for the whole thing. And it's all modular. I can change bits and pieces, make adjustments if I wanted to, change the screen and um, just tweak it over time. Um, but as I say, if anybody um, finds this useful, please comment, please let me know. Um, if you've got any questions about it, if it'd be useful for me to do a live stream, a live Q&A session, I can schedule one. Um, and if you need screen material, mats, species, launch monitors, sky tracks, anything I can help with, please let me know. I hope this has been useful. I'll be doing loads of videos going forward, using it, playing it. Hopefully no club tosses. I've really got to look after this and, and not have to do it all again. Um, and the right side is just nice now, cleaned up with all the storage. So thank you for um, anyone that's made comments on the previous uh, videos and clips. Um, appreciate all the nice uh, comments people have made. And um, I look forward to uh, talking with you all again um, when I uh, do a few, uh, few more informative videos, hopefully. Goodbye. Thank you.